right. So you've been called the next uh, Jorge Masvidal. You've been called Mini Masvidal. You're uh, one of uh, boxing legend Tony Atlas's new favorite UFC fighters, Mr. Adrian Yanez. I want to welcome you to the show, man. How's it going? Man, it's going great, man. I'm blessed, man. Fight Fights around the corner. I'm just happy, man. I'm, I'm really excited to get back in there, man. I'm super excited. Yeah, you've been really busy, man. I mean, um, since you want, you earned your contract in the UFC, it just seems like, you know, you've had fight after fight within a, just a month. Uh, the first one was two months, and then it's been about four months ever since. Do you like staying active like that? Is that your preference? Oh, yeah. Actually, I, I'd, I'd prefer to stay a little bit more active, if I'm being quite honest with you. I won't. Uh, a fight every three months seems perfect for me. Uh, I'm going to try to get two more in by the end of the year, if that's possible. Uh, like, uh, especially after this fight, you know, and then take uh, December, January, and February off, February off, and then get back right back to it. Try to fight every three months or even earlier than that. Cause you know, I, li I like being active. I just want, I just want to fight, you know, I'm in the UFC. I got here uh, like times before I would barely even get two fights in within the year. So I'm, now that I'm here and it's my job, I want to do it as much as I can. I mean, lately you're you're on a tear. You're on a six fight win streak. The last three of which have been in the UFC. You're fighting Randy Costa at UFC Vegas 32 on July 24th. How has your fight camp been, man? As we approach here, as, as we wind down, man, it's been great. I honestly never really had stopped training, uh, training after my last fight. So I've like never really had to get into shape or. I get a stay in shape or have a fat type of fat camp. If I like to call it, you know, trying to get my weight down. So it's just really just been like more of like the same. It's, it's, it's been fun. It's been a lot of learning, a lot more learning instead of just having to worry about cardio, cardio, cardio. So it's, it's been great to me. I've been loving it. Uh, we've been implementing a little bit of new things here and there in the training camp, man. And I, I really can't wait to show it off. You finished uh, all of your UFC fights. You finished, you got a head kick knockout. You got a picture-perfect right-hand counter KO. Uh, you earned your contract in just 39 seconds in the first round in the Contender Series. Some fighters take an entire career to amass the highlights you've done in just a handful of fights, man. What do you attribute that to? Man, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't know. I just love uh, I just love going for the knockouts. I, I, I love pushing a pace. And, and if I see opening, I don't wait on it. I take it. I take it the the – at, at the exact moments I need to, uh, especially like I see a lot of people being a little bit gun shy, but I'm like, it's a fight. You're going to have to go in there and uh, you're going to have to get dirty every once in a while. So to me, it's just one of those things that I'm always looking for a finish, no matter what position I'm in, no matter where I'm at. Uh, I, I want to get a finish no matter what. And it's, and that's just the way I fight too. Like I like pushing the pace. I like going, going forward and I like walking people down. So they're always going to give something up. They're always going to give something up, especially that last one with, uh, with uh, Gustavo, I just needed I just needed to time it better. I saw the opening. Uh, he was doing the little switch switch of the stance and trying to go uh, trying to hit that right hook on the lead switch. So I had noticed it the whole entire fight, and it was just the timing was different. And then also, whenever I fought Victor, I knew I had him hurt, and I just had to push it. I just had to put him in that deep water and just push it. And then with Brady, the opportunity uh, for myself, I just knew in that fight I had to go in there and get a finish. I had to because like I I didn't think they were gonna give me a contract if I if I didn't finish the guy. So as soon as as soon as I had that opening, I saw that right hand loaded up. I was like, "This is my shot," and I'm sitting down and I'm throwing everything I can with it. So it's just it's honestly just the way I fight too, man. I I love pushing the pace. I love fighting. Yeah, you're nonstop action, man. I mean, you're you're very you're one of the the guys that is must see TV, especially in the bantamweight division. I mean, it's such a such an amazing division nowadays, but when it comes to preparing for, for your opponent, uh, some fighters, they really like to kind of dive deep and study their opponents and other fighters. They, they kind of let their coaches and their team handle it. Where do you, where do you fall? I fall somewhere right in the middle. I don't like to deep dive too much into them. Uh, just because what I, what I tend to do is I tend to overestimate everybody's ability. Hmm. So like I, I was overestimating, uh, Gustavo by, a lot like I had so much respect for Gustavo for that fight that it, it also kind of made me a little bit more timid in the fight uh but then once I realized that it was just kind of just like I over I overestimated him I was like okay now I can settle things back and now I can start pushing the pace start doing this a little bit different so uh there's a it's it's kind of like a double-edged sword for me but like I overestimate or if I see something that they 
that they did they showed a lack of and I underestimated it. So uh to me I just like to think that like I'm getting the best versions of everybody every single time. So uh so I don't like to deep dive into them, but I like to see what they're generally what they're good at and what what they're seem like they're lacking. And then after that it's just more of imp- improvements on myself. Uh so I I like to do a little bit of both. So I don't like to like go dig myself in a rabbit hole and like just continue and just watch every second every like millisecond of the fight and just be like oh he's twitching here he's twitching here it's like no it's like because in the fight you know it, it's it's all gonna go away it it, it all goes away pretty soon because they all fight you differently so it it to me i just you know take a look at them see what they're generally about and then i go back with game plan a little bit you know not too much and then we just focus on myself and after that that's how pretty much like we really dive into fighters Nice. I mentioned it a little bit earlier, the Bantamweight division, how, how absolutely stacked it is right now. I mean, there, there was, it's crazy to think, right, that there was a time when the Bantamweight division was kind of, uh, you know, but now it's different, man. You guys got power, technique, everything down there. Guys like Peter Jan, Sandhagen, Font, Garbrandt, you. When I really, to my eyes, man, when I look at your fighting style, you have such a great understanding of distance and range and timing and and power and when you add all that together you're really a handful to deal with man but what i wanted to know is was there who are some of the fighters that you may have modeled your style after when you were a younger dude man uh honest honestly to me i had really admired and really loved the way anderson silva fought anderson silva was like one of those guys that i had always looked up to and every time i watched him fight i was always in awe you know, just also too, like Kane Velasquez was one of those guys that I re- I, I really admired as well. Uh, but Anderson Silva on the striking level was just like to me was just like, holy crap, this is amazing. Uh, I and I, I would see what he would do, and now you you would see him kind of gauge the distance from uh from time to time. Like the first first minute of the fight, he wouldn't really even throw a punch. He would just kind of just, hey, here, faint here check here you come a little bit he's like all right hey, come a little bit forward he takes a step back he realizes okay so I, I i did at some point mimic myself as at like what anderson silva has been doing uh you know our styles are still like two completely different but at the basis of it you know i had looked up to him whenever it came to striking and uh and fighting uh just because man like I had always loved how, like, I, I would replay the Forrest Griffin knockout all, like, every single day. Even that Vitor Belfort knockout. There's there's just a lot, like, a lot that I would look at and just be like, man, I want to do that one day. So, to me, he, I, I tried to, try to uh, make that style my own, but Danish, Anderson Silva is just Anderson Silva, so uh, you won't be able to do everything he does. But and then now the person who I really like to watch is uh, Israel Adesanya because his his distance controls super well. Like he knows how he knows how to manage it. He knows when to throw, when not to throw, when to when to faint and when to throw a punch and miss like on purpose because there's there's some shots that are not intended to land. A lot of these people want to be like they want to throw four punch combination and want to land every single one of them. But to me, I know I had to throw three punches to land one. Uh, there, there's just it, it goes it go you can really deep dive into it so watching people like Anderson Silva and then uh Israel Adesanya to me are like some of the people I like to watch consistently because the manage of the distance and then uh getting hit the least I love that yeah I mean those are two great guys right to, to model a style after you've done a fantastic job of of taking some from Anderson and, and making your own thing but like I said I really think that you you're incredible your stand-up game is is something to be to behold and then people forget that you know you're you're accomplished on the ground too you can get it done there you're only 27 years old you're texas born and bred are you still with metro fight fight club oh yes sir ever since uh after my my second amateur fight i've been with them from there on out uh coach sauce Elise, man if it wasn't for him i wouldn't be in this position uh he pretty much has like he's pretty much like the mma coach like to me Cause he's, he's been doing, uh, he's, he was doing, uh, Muay Thai for as long, for a super long time. He was, since he was a teenager. And then whenever, uh, whenever jujitsu came along, he's been, been doing, uh, jujitsu since the nineties. So I have a coach who knows the, who knows, uh, the stand up and the ground game. 
then whenever he was teaching, uh, was coaching uh, Rico Rodriguez and uh, Tito Ortiz and all them, that's where he started picking up most of his wrestling. So I, I like, I really don't have to go like find a boxing coach, find a Thai coach, find a wrestling coach or a BJJ coach or anything like that, because I got pretty much just one guy for all of it. And then he also competed earlier, like earlier on uh, and was fighting people like Jeremy Horn and everything. So to me, like, I got, I, I got the coach and he's, he was one of these old school. And I, 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 I love that type of style. I like, I love the old school type of, type of, uh, you know, coaching, you know, rough, rough around the edges tells you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Mm-hmm. So I love, I love it. And it's been a perfect fit ever since we walked into his gym. That's cool, man. And, and loyalty, you know, it's a big thing, especially, you know, not, not everybody has the same, uh, the same, the same loyalty standards, what we'll call it. So it's cool to see brother the goal of the game, right. Is to win, to win gold. Right. So do you think that with an, an impressive victory over Randy Costa, do you think that you'll have a number? I would surely hope so. Uh, but at the same time, I know where my division's at. I know there, there's a lot of really, it, it, it's really crowded in the top 25. It's super crowded. Uh, you have people that just get knocked out the, the top 15, just like that, just off, of, just like uh, somebody wins and somebody has a bigger win over them and they, they end up getting knocked back. Uh, so like you got like somebody that actually like Mike, the July 24th card is actually stacked with a whole bunch of band weights too. So looking at that, you see all those guys on the card, you look at the headliner, you see, you see Corey Sanhagen Sanha- Sanha- versus TJ Dillashaw, even though TJ Dillashaw has been out. Uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure if, if they, if he still has a number next to his name, he's going to get one soon as after he fights. Uh, and then you got Kyler Phillips. Uh, he has a number next to his name going out there. He's fighting another uh, another guy. I think he was he was supposed to fight a bigger name, but I don't know what happened there. Uh, but man, like this whole card is filled with uh, with thirty fivers that are ready, you know, that are ready and you know, ready to go. So I, I I know where my reality is at. I would I would really hope to have a number next to my name, but at the same time, I don't mind building my spot and like working towards my spot so whenever i do get a number next to my name it's solidified with the resume that i have uh if i had gotten a if i got uh a number next to my name after that uh gustavo lopez fight i personally wouldn't have thought that i deserved it uh just because i'm two fights in uh i know after this fight if i go out there and i and i put a definitive stop to randy costa i'm pretty sure I should have a number next to my na- next to my name just because, and he's on a he's on a he's he's on a two fight win streak going off of a uh, uh, two two really good performances so it, it should put a number next to my name or at least in the top twenty five and then after that you know uh, my next fight after that should get me in the top fifteen so I don't mind working for it at all like uh, I'm I'm just that guy that's going to be a workhorse. I love the attitude, man. And I agree with you. I think you're right there. You know, when you get the win, I think that you'll be right there. Kyler Phillips, he was supposed to fight uh, Rafael Asuncio, but Asuncio got hurt. He's fighting uh, Roland Pavia now. So should be another, as you said, there's like four or five Bantamweight fights. So it's it's kind of stacked. That should do. That should go a long way to kind of figure out what's going to be next for a lot of you guys, I imagine, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially right now, like the kind of the titles being kind of like it's a, it's a little in a, it's a little bit in a weird position with Aljamain. I know he's like uh, having, having surgery and all that stuff. So I don't uh, I, he had surgery. I don't know if he has or hasn't, but it's still in this weird situation. You know, Peter Jan might not get the next shot or he should get the next shot. Don't know, uh, especially with the with probably a, a Corey Sanhagen win uh, over TJ Dillashaw. Might even shoot him over pretty young, Peter Jan to get that uh, rematch with Aljamain. So I, I don't know. It's in this weird position because even if uh, TJ Dillashaw goes out there and wins, uh, shoot, might just put them over both, oh, put him over Peter Jan as well, and he gets the next title shot. So it's in this really weird spot. Uh, but until then, like I know I'm, I know I'm not there. Uh, I know I'm not that close. So I'm really not too worried about it. Uh, I still got to make uh stake my claim to get there so at the end of the day i do want that title i do i do want to hold the uc belt uh but i still know realistically where i'm at and how much more i need to work so it, it's it's still still in a tough spot but i i can't worry about those those killers when i still have like i i still have like the, like the regular top 15 to worry about and then the top 25 to worry about so uh to me i'm just i'm just working for sure well i love the attitude man uh- I appreciate your time. Why don't you take a few minutes here and shout out your coaches, sponsors, whatever you'd like. The floor is yours, my man. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, again, going back to my coach, Salsa Lease, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be in the position I am today. Uh, also, 
uh, my management team, uh, Radio Sports Agency, uh, Jason House, Ed Cap, uh, Jacob Parga, uh, uh, Lance, you know, they all, they all, Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy, they all do re- a really great job. You know, they, they make sure I'm well taken care of. And then also y'all, y'all can hit up my website, yannismay.com, pick you up one of my shirts, you know, for my upcoming fight. Uh, was inspired. The nickname was inspired by uh, Brendan Fis- uh, Fitzgerald after my last fight. Uh, did I say it, Brendan or Brent? Uh, I think it's Brendan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Uh, he get he he shot it out after uh, my last my last fight, and then MMA uh, Island on Instagram they picked it up and they uh, they made a uh, they made a, a a visual, and then I had it sent over to a guy. He made a really badass comic 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 tee that's on the back of the shirt so uh i love it you know go to yannismma.com you know support a local fighter uh support you know just support a fighter uh, you know uh venom you know they they pay you out but you know you don't get any of the other stuff so it's pretty cool but this is my my shirt that'd be pretty cool to see other people supporting it so it'd be pretty cool well i can't wait man ufc vegas 32 july 24th you have a featured spot it's it's the main event the co-main event and then there you are with randy costa so i can't wait brother i'll be pulling for you and uh, until then just take care and we'll speak after your fight maybe cool man thank you for the platform man really appreciate it anytime brother